Hello and welcome again to UCL Global Health. We all absolutely depend on drugs. Drugs are a key element of any health system. And there are a lot of exciting new developments going on in drug development. And uh, I'm joined by uh, Professor Ijeoma Uchebu, who's from our, well, you're Professor of Pharmaceutical Nanoscience. That's a right. Fantastic title. Yeah. She's from the School of uh, Pharmacy. So Ijeoma, just, what is nanoscience? So nanoscience is really the study of um, materials, but materials that have either um, their function residing at the nanoscale, so that's nanometers, which is... Um, so how big is a nanometer? A nanometer is, if you consider a human hair, the sizes that we look at are a thousandth of the width of a human hair. So absolutely tiny. Very, very small. You can only see them with an electron microscope. But what you find is that materials change their function if you reduce them to this size. So to give you a good example, if you have particles that are in the millimetre scale and you inject those into the body, they go to certain areas and most of them will get trapped in the lung. Now if you have them in the nanometre size, you can get them go to go to different tissues. And you could then use that to target drugs, for example, to tumours. Oh. So that's how we can change the way materials behave, so simply really by changing their size. So the, the, the body has got all these mechanisms for filtering stuff out. Precisely. So the smaller you make it, you can get into new areas. Precisely. And if you make them too small, very small, so for example, less than about 20 nanometers, 10 nanometers, what you find is then they go straight out through the kidneys and into the urine. And so it's very difficult to target those. So there's a sweet spot size-wise, which we all aim for. So your job is inventing not so much new drugs, but better delivery systems for existing drugs. Is that Precisely, right? yes. So, so give, we, give me an example of a drug. So an example of a drug, one of the drugs that we're actually developing now through our spin-out company, Nanomerics, is that we have a drug which is normally released in the brain if you feel pain. And this is, these are the encephalins. So if you have a painful stimuli, this, this uh, compound will be released in order to help you cope with this pain, painful stimulus. Are they related to endorphins? Precisely, yes, they are. They are in the same category. So what we've tried to do then is that we've looked at this and said this could be a, this could be a drug. But the thing is that if you try and administer this drug, it's immediately destroyed. It's destroyed by enzymes. It's destroyed in the blood. It's destroyed in the stomach. It's destroyed throughout the gut. So what we've done is that by packaging it into little nanoparticles, we're now able to get it to be absorbed in the gut, so it can be taken by mouth, and we're able to get it to be transported into the brain. Without being destroyed? Without being destroyed. So we stop its destruction by packaging it into these small nanoparticles. Nanoparticles have a way of getting through the gut wall into the blood, and they also have a way of transporting this drug to the brain. And this is for pain relief? For pain relief. So we're developing this um, drug now for the treatment of neuropathic pain. This is a condition that's really poorly served. Yeah. You find about only a quarter of the sufferers say that their pain is relieved by about 50%. Most people are on drugs that don't work if they have neuropathic pain. So that's pain. incredibly exciting. What about cancer drugs? So there are some cancer drugs on the market that utilise nanotechnology. So there's a, a quite one of the first ones is a is a drug that's used to treat a broad spectrum of cancers called doxorubicin. Now this drug, when it's normally administered, it poisons the heart, and you have people yeah. then having heart block, and they cannot no longer take the drug, and sometimes there are fatal consequences. Now by packaging this drug in small nanoparticles called liposomes. What, what they've been able to do is they've been able to divert it away from the heart and into the tumour tissue. And this drug has been on the market since 1995. Fantastic. So the technology is mature in some respects and not in other respects. And what about amphotericin? So that's another product that we're developing in our company. And amphotericin B is used to treat visceral leishmaniasis. This is a disease that... Um, occurs that the endemic areas are sort of around Ethiopia, Bangladesh, around that Northern area. India, Bihar, yes. borders of Nepal Precisely. as well, actually, you Precisely. see a lot. Yeah, but for, in the Nigerian context, it's around Ethiopia and, and, and that, those areas. So um, amphotericin B is a drug that poisons the kidneys. So it does poison the parasite and get rid of the parasite, but a lot of people have kidney problems when they take amphotericin B. And the other thing about amphotericin B is that you can only give it by intravenous injection. So you need to be able to set up a drip line yeah. and have a 
trained personnel who can set up this drip line. And you can imagine that bumps up the cost quite a bit for this drug. Now, there is a nanoparticulate form of the drug, which is quite good at avoiding the kidneys, but it's quite expensive at about $300 per vial. And a patient will need a few vials to get over the disease. So what we've done is that we've taken this drug and we've packaged it into nanoparticles and we've shown that you can give it by mouth and it's effective in leishmaniasis in our animal models. And so this is another therapy that we're trying to develop. So it's not only more effective, it's actually going to end up as lower cost. Lower cost because you can take it by mouth, you can yeah. take it at home, you don't need the drip giving sets, you don't need the trained personnel. So, my, so my, my last question was going to be, well, is this all just fancy technology for the rich? But actually, you've already shown well, for leishmaniasis, which is yeah. a very big common tropical illness and one that's very difficult to treat, you've got an answer. I mean, thinking, you're originally from Nigeria, I think. I so, am indeed. Uh, thinking of relevance to Africa, for example, and, and Nigeria, could you see in the relatively near future a time when nanoparticles and nanoscience might help address? Change things. Um, I, I definitely, because the technology is a platform technology. And so really, if you have problems like you can't give drugs orally or you can't target them to the right place, they have a very poor therapeutic index. In other words, they're more likely to poison healthy tissue than they are to treat the disease tissue, then you can apply nanotechnology to these areas as well. And also the area of, of oral vaccination is an area that's crying out for new technologies so that we can give vaccines cheaply and to a wide variety of people without having to worry about the cold chain and worry about giving injections and things like that. So there are areas, and in fact, I'm going to Nigeria in November to talk at a nanoscience conference. They've kindly invited me to talk Wow, so, where is it? so the Nigerians are hosting that? Yes, they are. Where, in, Abuja, in Lagos? Or? In Abuja. Abuja. Yeah, so I'm going there in mid, I think the end of November. So vaccination, antibiotics, anti-cancer. This is incredibly yeah. exciting. Yeah. And any, any drug that has these problems that I've talked about, you yeah. can't deliver it or you have um, it going to the wrong areas of the body, we can apply a nanotechnology solution and see if it works. I'm not guaranteeing it's going to work in all <laughs> cases, but we can apply the solution. This is fantastic. Well, I think we're going to hear an awful lot more about this. So Ijo, uh, we'll get you to come back and, okay. and talk again. And good luck in Abuja. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Okay.